the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So over Thanksgiving break, I found myself talking to my mother-in-law about books we'd been reading, and it turned out, uh, strangely, that uh, all of the books that we had been reading were very similar, uh, and they all had to do with World War II and, and the Holocaust, and, um, and little moments uh, of goodness or light or of hope or of triumph uh, that sort of uh, came out of that, that dark period in our history. Uh, and I started to think about it, and, uh, and some of the movies that, uh, that reflect the same story, movies like Schindler's List uh, or um, uh, Life is Beautiful, remember that movie, uh, where uh, a father uh, is able to provide hope and light and laughter and joy uh, for his son, even uh, amidst uh, concentration camp. Uh, and I started to think that maybe in our time and place, that is somewhat of our apocalyptic literature. Remember, I talked about apocalyptic literature being literature uh, that was written amidst the chaos. Not that there would be chaos to come, uh, but amidst a time where uh, people's hearts were already broken, uh, where uh, they looked around and they saw destruction, they saw oppression, uh, they needed hope. Uh, and uh, a lot of the apocalyptic literature provided the hope that God was still at the helm, that God was in the world, uh, that there was a light uh, that was shining even amidst the darkness. Uh, and I think that in, in many ways, uh, as we have this Advent come amidst a time where it seems rather unsettling when we flip on the news cycle and whether it's uh, what the news uh, chooses to cover or whether it's our particular times, uh, it seems chaotic out there. Those stories of light shining, of hope overcoming, of us walking out of uh, the darkest period of our, of our history that we can recall uh, uh, in a way that gives us the assurance uh, that, that God is at the helm, that things will be okay, uh, may be exactly what we need in this season. And maybe that's why we're drawn to those stories. Uh, and maybe as our eyes are a little cloudy over uh, what's up and what's down and, and who's right and who's wrong, uh, that there is something clarity, uh, there's something clarifying about that, uh, that clear eyes that people seem to have uh, as, they, as they fought such, uh, uh, such, such heinous evil. Uh, and so I think as we approach Advent, uh, we might do well to think of, uh, of this as not just our journey towards that Christmas day, towards that promise 2,000 years ago uh, that a light shone in the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it, uh, but that that light continues to shine. Uh, every day that light breaks into the darkness uh, and the darkness cannot overcome it and the light prevails and the light grows, uh, the more often we proclaim that. Uh, and so we are called to be ready during Advent. This is the first Sunday of Advent, and we're called to be ready not just to retell that story and to acknowledge that that story is alive and well and, and still breathing uh, and affecting the world, uh, but that God continues to come in. And I know uh, that we read about that second coming, uh, those end times, uh, and so many times people have, uh, they've organized religions around uh, finding that precise date of when that was supposed to happen uh, and waiting, uh, having their bags packed, ready to go, and then that time comes and goes, uh, and, 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 and we're all still right where we were, uh, and it's hard to stay attentive. But maybe it's more about looking for the ways that God breaks into our lives uh, day in and day out. Uh, than, uh, than Christ coming in uh, and, 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 uh, and, and building up that new Jerusalem uh, right there in the moment. Maybe it's about those little ways uh, that Christ breaks in, that that light shines, uh, that we are transformed uh, by, by God breaking into our lives. If we're open to it, if we set the stage for it, an Advent is a time for us to set the stage, to be ready. I have to tell you... Um, when I played youth baseball, which lasted about a season and a half until my front teeth got knocked out, and, um, and uh, it had a little bit to do with me not being ready or alert. Uh, so this parable, uh, and it resonates. Uh, but I can recall Elliot's coaches, all, especially to Elliot, uh, but to the rest of the team at large, to always be saying, be ready. You're always got to be ready, to be ready. And uh, uh, with a kid with a wandering mind, it was not the easiest thing for him to do. And I could see how frustrated the coaches were getting, and I could see how uh, uh, frustrated he was uh, until they had this uh, a clinic and they had this pro player come in, and he said, you know what, there's no possible way for you to be ready all the time. He said, it's impossible. 
He said, but you need to pick your moments and to know uh, that when the pitcher is getting ready to throw the pitch, you need to know who's on what base, how many outs there are, what your first, second, and third responsibility uh, uh, to be. I, I quit baseball when picking daisies was still my primary responsibility. So, um, <laughs> but I think Advent is our reminder. If you asked me, am I ready? Am I ready for God to break in? Am I ready for God to come and take stock of my life? I would have to say no. I try, uh, but I realize that, uh, that there's a haze, uh, that there are times where I, I'm stronger in my faith, there are times where uh, I feel uh, more proud of the person that I am or the Christian or the disciple that I am, uh, but I need those moments where I'm asked to be particularly conscious of that, where I'm asked to be ready, to take stock of where I am, what I want to be, where I feel God's calling me to be where I see God in the world, uh, and where my distractions uh, might be keeping me from seeing with clear eyes, or where that light is breaking in uh, to the darkness and I'm not necessarily looking closely enough at it. And so this journey, uh, this journey towards that manger is also a journey towards the way that there's thousands and thousands of reflection of divine light in your lives, and how do we live and prepare for it? Whether this is our last day or whether we have a zillion more days, uh, we are called to live in anticipation of God. Maybe a more apt uh, a parable goes back to my middle school days. And do you remember middle school dances? <laughs> my palms are already sweating just thinking about it. Uh, you know, <laughs> So you, you've decided what you want to do, and then you're trying to get up the will to do it. You're standing by the punch bowl on the sidelines, and you're, you're thinking, I'm going to ask her to dance. Um, as are uh, just about all of your friends thinking of who they're going to ask to dance, and then uh, the slow song comes on, and you think to yourself, I would love to dance to that, but this isn't the right song. I don't like this song. The next song is going to be the right song. Uh, and then the next song comes on, and you're thinking, well, I, I'm thirsty. I was, I was actually just getting a, a, a glass of punch. Uh, but the next song, uh, and then the next song is when you have to go to the bathroom, and then uh, you, know, you can't find the, the, the girl for the next song. And then finally, uh, the DJ says, uh, and this is the very last song, and you realize this is it. This is the moment. Either I ask her to dance, or I go home, and I haven't done it. Advent is a moment for us to live like it's the last dance. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What do we desire? How are we living our lives? And how are we missing opportunities to be light, to see God, to follow, to reign in Christ's presence here in the world, to anticipate God? So this Advent, open your eyes wide for God to break into your life, for you to see light that's all around you, and for you to live like it's the last dance.